Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about moving. A midlife move is a different experience than moving in your 20s and 30s. Join us as we share what it's like to move from a home you've lived in for decades while raising your family. Let's get started. Listeners, today we're talking about moving. Those of you who listen regularly know that Mindy is our resident expert on all things moving because she's moved so frequently. But Julie and I had been living in our homes for a long time, and it just so happens that we both moved this year. Julie moved in May, and I moved in August. And Julie, how many years had you lived in your house? Um, 24. Okay, (gasps) 24. And I had lived in my house 19. So each of us had lived a long time in our houses. Mm -hmm. And in this process, I discovered some differences in what moving was like now at my age after being somewhere such a lengthy time compared to when I used to move pretty frequently, like every two years, the first 10 years of our marriage. Well, then when you stay in one place for 19 years, it's a lot different when you go to move again. In fact, I'm still feeling a little shell-shocked from the whole process. (laughs) (laughs) But let's just talk a little bit about like what is different from selling a house 20 years ago. And Mindy, I know you've sold houses 20 years ago and you've sold them more recently. Like what's different about selling a house just in general 20 years ago versus now? Well, definitely social media. Like it's so much about word of mouth and there's so many ways you can market yourself now that weren't available then. And so that that's a big deal because just you sharing it on socials, friends sharing it, a lot of times you can get a buyer like that. And so that's that's kind of a great resource. Well, I was just thinking about internet pictures. I mean, the last time I mm-hmm. sold my house, our realtor did have a flyer, like a paper flyer with some colored pictures, but there wasn't, I don't think, anything on the internet. And It's just so weird because this generation would not understand, but you used to get just a picture of the outside in a little tiny book and you could flip through the books. You could flip through the book and it had the houses in your town for sale and you just have the address and the outside. And truly, when you went to look at a house, it was a complete surprise. It was a little exciting Mm -hmm. because you just never knew what you were going to walk into. Nowadays, when we go into a house, we have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like before we even step in the door. Yeah. And I, when we were moving, going through some files, I found a little, it was a little notebook that had been put together on our house. I guess it was sitting out on the counter for an open house, uh-huh. like our house from 24 years ago, like when we bought in Memphis. Oh my gosh, the pictures were not professional at all. It looked like Mm. the realtor had just come in and snapped some pictures Mm -hmm. and she might have even taken them at night. Like they were not good. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, so that that's a huge difference. Um, Just getting to look at professional pictures and videos and all of that. And Mm -hmm. I would say the other big shock though for me is that when you downsize, now you're going to pay the same price or more oh, than the true. house that you left. True. Well, that's true. That's a bit of a shock. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just thinking how much more pressure it is to sell t- mm-hmm. now than it was 20 years ago. I remember like you used to maybe like clean your house. I mean, like you would for company, but I don't mm-hmm. remember really like packing up anything, clearing things out, trying to make mm-hmm. the rooms look bigger. Like your house was what your house was. And yeah. now it's like a whole business. Like you've got mm-hmm. to stage that house before they ever come for the pictures. I mean, you don't have to, but you're going to get a better response if you do. Yeah. And your pictures are going to look better and you're going to get more right. people through the door based on those pictures. And so there's just so much more pressure, even getting a house on the market than I think there was 20 years ago. Well, and I remember moving into um, our house in Brentwood, um, thinking, how are we ever going to fill this up? Oh. So we didn't have a lot of stuff right. to mm-hmm. to go through. You know, we were still accumulating. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's a huge difference. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mindy, you've sold, you know, well, you've kind of kept up with the times better because you I've had sold to. when there was just a picture of the outside of your house. And then you've sold when every little nook and cranny is all over the internet. How have you felt about that process? <laughs> Well, you wonder why I'm so nervous about 
home, that episode we did about the HGTV and how, you know, um, that's what you feel like your house needs to look like and, Mm -hmm. and getting past the idea that it needs to always be show ready Mm -hmm. for everyone, for the masses. Mm -hmm. That is hard for me to unlearn Mm -hmm. because I have sold a lot of homes. It's a different mentality now. It tricks my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And so it's just, it's just one of those things that, you know, I, I'm still learning. Yeah. No, I can definitely see how if you've had to go through this process multiple times, Mm -hmm. you're not going to paint a bedroom a wild color because then you're going to think, well, I'm going to have to repaint that in two years when Mm -hmm. I move again. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting past that now. <laughs> uh huh. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So there are a lot of things to think about. Like if you're our age and you've lived in a home while your kids have been growing up and now you're thinking about getting ready to move, this may come not as a shock because, of course, you know that people do it, but the level of work just to get your house on the market might come as a surprise to you. It really does. And I would say also a lot of in bigger cities, I've heard this happening that um, the market is still really crazy in bigger cities. And so you might get an idea that your house is going to sell for a lot, lot more and think, oh, this, I could buy so much more with this, but then go back to what Julie just said. You're not going to get what you could get 20 years ago Mm -hmm. now. So make sure you have a place to go before you put that sign in the yard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Moving from a house that you've owned a really long time, especially one that you've raised your family in, there is so many things to sift through. And when you're getting ready to put your house on the market, you might be in a hurry. And so you can get bogged down by going through those memories, or you can just like shove them all in a box to go through later. But I found it to be kind of an emotional process Because either way, I was touching things in the back of drawers, in the back of closets that I hadn't seen or thought about could be 15 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I had a lot to go through because we we were not planning on moving. I thought that would be the house that I was in forever. You know, we had talked about cleaning things out, getting rid of things. And but as long as you have the space, it's harder to do that. So mm-hmm. I had let a lot of stuff stay that I thought, well, eventually I might want this or I might want to keep it for a grandchild. You know, I still had a lot of that. And I did um, let a lot of it go. I sold a lot of it on Facebook Marketplace. But then the stuff that I couldn't let go, I moved here. And then now that we've been here four months, I've gone through it again. Mm-hmm. And I'll say it's easier to let go when you're in your new place Mm, (laughs) because I I don't know you don't I don't want to fill my closets up I don't want to fill the attic up one example was um, family pictures like I had a couple of stairwells in the old house that had a a gallery wall of family pictures and I just knew I was going to pack those up and put those back up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I haven't done that in fact just last week I unpacked my last last box of pictures and I even laid them out and I was going to put them back on the wall. And then I decided not to. I took them all out of the frames mm-hmm. and I put them in a portfolio. I've talked about that before. I bought a big portfolio and I just put all my photos in there because I can't bear to throw them away. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. I mean, some are wedding photos and, yeah, you, you know, a graduation photos. I'm not going to get rid of them. But I just thought this house, my kids have never lived in this house. Like it mm-hmm. just didn't seem Like I wanted to go back that far Mm -hmm. in a house that they've never lived in. Like, let's start with some new pictures, maybe of the grandkids or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Mm -hmm. it was a little emotional that night thinking, I'm not putting these back up, but I just, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just didn't seem to be the the right place. Yeah. I've kind of felt that way because I brought some walls of pictures that I also had up and there's really not the same kind of wall that I can even put them on. But I don't know that they really work in the space. And then also like you, Julie, I mean, none of my kids, except for one, has even spent the night in this house. Like, you know, it's like, well, I'm not really going to put up their childhood photos. I mean, maybe Mm -hmm. at some point in some space, but I don't know. It just, it feels a little weird. I can remember my parents moving last time they moved and my mom packing up the pictures and saying she was going to put them up again. And I was kind of offended, like... We're not going to put our pictures right. up. Like, how is anyone going to know that you have kids and stuff? But 
She has eventually over the years put new pictures up, yeah. but it's just, I can see now that it's hard to just recreate exactly what you had before. Yeah. And I do have a few sitting around in frames, but sure. um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just wanted to leave room for new new things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, Mindy, you've moved more often. So do you feel like you don't get as hung up on those or do you feel like yeah. you do transfer from one house to the other? Yeah, when you have to emotionally go there more often, you're more ready and prepared to do so. You Mm -hmm. know what it takes to move. You prepare yourself mentally for what it takes to move because you know it's you're leaving a season behind every time. Mm -hmm. It is a physical representation of leaving a season behind. And I don't care how long you've lived in some place, one year, six months. I mean, that is a season. Another thing, and even in addition to pictures, I think was just emotional was just the memories. Like I had brought our twins home to that house and still Mm -hmm. hanging in their closet was their little dresses they wore for their one year picture. Now, why I never put those away with the other clothes (laughs) as time went on, I don't know. They just were special to me and they just hung on the very end of the bar. Well, now I had to pack those up. Like, you know, and like you could picture them crawling up and down the stairs. You could picture where their cribs were. Like you could picture as they grew, you could picture the fights you had in the hallway, the doors that were slammed. Like there were so many memories that a house carries that I found that to be very emotional too. Um, And I don't know. I mean, yeah, sure. It was sweet when I moved. uh, I mean, bittersweet when we moved from the house that we raised our first daughter in for the first year of her life, but it was one year. But when I looked at the house that it had seen an infant all the way up to their college years, it seemed like it held a whole life cycle. And that was very emotional. And I think that other people in this age group would also feel that if you're moving from the house that you raised your kids in. Oh, yeah, that made a huge difference. Because like you said, um, other moves involved maybe moving to a house because you were adding a child. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like you knew you were still going to be in the same phase of life. It was just getting bigger, better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And to move from the house without your kids moving with you was mm-hmm. very different. And like that last house, David was just one. So it was the only house he ever knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was emotional watching him, you know, leaving the only house that he ever knew. And I doubt, I don't even think our other kids or at least my middle child remember the Mm -hmm. former house either, you know? And so I just was the whole time we were moving, I was just picturing birthday parties and backyard parties we had had and um, sleepovers and all the, you know, just all the stuff that was Mm -hmm. in that house and that won't be happening in this house, you know? So that, yeah, that was really bittersweet. Yeah. So there's a lot of, I think a lot more emotions may be moving at this point in your life or, or if you're moving after being in a house a long time, Maybe like you need to allow time to even process those if you can. It might be a fast move. It might not even be something. You might end up having to process those later, but I do think they will come up. Yeah. All right. Well, then you move. So you've had the emotional experience of saying goodbye to your old house, Mm -hmm. and then you move into your new house. And I guess I thought that I would be more excited about it. It wasn't the same feeling as like when you when I moved into the house that I left. And maybe it's Julie, maybe it's because of what you just said, where you're not moving your whole family with you and you don't feel like you're entering a new and better season. It's not that I feel like I'm entering a worse season. It's just maybe not as exciting of a season. I'm not sure. I I was pretty excited, even though I feel like I'm probably definitely not moving into a better season, but it was going to make that season better. Okay. Maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and um, I've just never looked back. Like it's, it's been new Mm -hmm. and exciting and it was not even something I thought I wanted to do. So it's just really weird how it, Mm -hmm. you know, met that need because I I didn't think I even wanted it. And now I'm so glad I'm not in that old house. (laughs) Well, that's good, Julie. (laughs) Yeah. Great testimony. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I yeah. think I've been a little overwhelmed by how long it takes to get to know a new space. <laughs> like, there's no muscle memory. There's no, no. Um, just my hand knows where to hit the light switch. 
I know how to vacuum this room. Like I, you, you develop mm-hmm. systems of how you'll sweep your kitchen. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I always do it this way. Like you don't even think about that anymore. That's just the way you sweep it. Every little thing, the doors you go in and out of, like just everything is different. And I forgot what it's like to live in a new place, hear new sounds, like the house mm-hmm. sounds different to me. Is that a normal sound? Yeah. Should I be worried about that? <laughs> like, is that falling apart? Or <laughs> There's just so many things that you don't know about a house. And I think that I come to love things that I take care of. So once I've taken care of the house, mm-hmm. I will come to love it, but it doesn't really feel like mine. Yeah, I we joke because uh, when anybody empties the dishwasher, because you know I have I have my mom here and me and John and now and my middle my youngest son is back. I, I I never know where to expect to find things because we don't have a place yet. You know, I still open in every drawer to find the knife, the spoon, the measuring cup. And not because it's misplaced, but I just can't remember where <laughs> our spot is, you know. And I still hit every light switch. We have one uh, yep. bank of switches in the dining room that has six switches. Well, I hit them all. I hit every single one mm-hmm. to turn the light on mm-hmm. over the table. You know, it's like, I, I how long is it going to take me? I finally had to <laughs> label the garage doors and the lights in the garage because I mm-hmm. I would always hit the wrong garage door. Mm-hmm. Couldn't couldn't remember it. So yeah, it does take a long time to get to know to know it and to know how you want to live in it and clean it and take care of it and. Yeah, 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 there's really a lot of it. I have spent an inordinate amount of time on small tasks that people would be like, why did that take so long? It took me max three minutes to change the water filter out in my old refrigerator. Mm-hmm. I got here, the water filter said it needed to be changed. I went and bought one. I thought, this will be a five minute job. 45 minutes later, I'm still <laughs> Googling, why won't this water filter yeah. fit in here? I'm rechecking the model number. Yeah. I'm reading customer complaints about how they changed it just a little bit. And you got to push it, but you don't want to push it too hard because you don't want to break yeah. anything. And it's just like, that was to change one water mm-hmm. filter. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had to have Andrew change mine uh, Friday night. <laughs> oh, it's just amazing. You know, like just programming the garage door opener. I'm again on what would I do without Google? Because I don't know how anyone changed programmed their garage door opener before that. And it still took me at least a half hour. You know, even just using the shower, it has multiple shower heads. I've only ever had just one shower head. A shower works. Mm-hmm. You turn it on, you turn it off. It's not like, oh, I'm going to get on and now something's going to spray at me this way and spray at me that way. And wait, I didn't have the door closed and now it's spraying out into the bathroom. Like, <laughs> There's just a lot to learn and all of them take more time than you think. Definitely. One of the things is the thermostat. Like at our old house, it had to be on 70 to get it cool. We can keep it on 74, 75 and it feels great here. So, you know, you have to learn those things. Your new, your new normals. Mm -hmm. Mindy, you're nodding your head. What have you gone through? All of this is so, so familiar. (laughs) It takes so much time to learn a house and it takes so much than you think it should. And so um, I'm telling you, all I know is like the first year, anything can happen. Your neighbors, your house, it's almost like you need to just give yourself space for a year. Like you're not going to know even the weather. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you guys stayed in the same zone of mm-hmm. weather, mm-hmm. but learning your house, your yard, maintenance things, you know, quirks, it just takes so much time. And I truly love this question because I've thought I've thought a lot about this, um, how much it takes to to know and and all that. And I would even almost add like feeling at home mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm feeling like you walk in and it's just like, okay, Mm -hmm. I have a few projects. There's nothing necessarily pressing maintenance mode. You know what I mean? Like when Mm -hmm. things finally get to that, I know what to expect maintenance mode. I've hit finally a new level of that feeling at home, contentment. I know what to expect just recently. And it's been two and a half years. Mm. Oh my goodness, Mindy. (laughs) And I like, it just getting to know the house took a year. I was moving rooms around the mm-hmm. whole first year trying to figure out, you know, you were like, well, how does my house want to be lived in? Well, I thought this little going to be this, but now it's that like, mm-hmm. it's different. Um, 
it, it's just taken me a long time to get things into a routine, making adjustments to know how to handle certain things better, seasons better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, buying Christmas for your first Christmas. And mm. then the second year, maybe you make adjustments to that. And then the third year, I told you I'm finally excited about Christmas. And it's because I had the first year of learning and buying the second of making minor adjustments. And now the third, I'm just going to enjoy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then when you said that last time, I started worrying about that. And then I forgot about it until just now, like how other things haven't worked in this house. So maybe the Christmas tree won't or the decorations won't. (gasps) Like, Yeah. um, It's different. And of course this would change if you've moved locally versus long distance, Mm -hmm. you know, there would be different issues. Like I mentioned the weather, I mentioned Mm -hmm. the seasons. Like I finally feel like we know what our grass is going to do and how to handle it as winter comes on in this zone, Mm -hmm. um, plants and flowers and when it gets cold and when Mm -hmm. it's not, I mean, it's summer most of the time. So I feel like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) it's just, there's so much of a learning curve and some things, Marie, I love that you brought this up at the very beginning of the episode. Some things take time and you don't realize it until you've looked up and you're like, oh, I'm not worried about that anymore. Or, Mm. oh, Mm -hmm. this isn't an issue anymore. It's been an issue in the past. Mm -hmm. And you're surprised. You're surprised at the healing or the the contentment or the feeling Mm -hmm. at at rest in your home. Mm -hmm. To be able to feel truly at rest is what we're all going for. So Right, right. Yeah, I I've only been in here a couple of weeks and I I can truly say that we've had about 20 minutes of actual rest. <laughs> like we we sat down to watch one show together about 10 days in because we finally got our internet working and I think I fell asleep in 15 minutes. So that was my mm-hmm. rest. Um because then I fell asleep. Yeah. But like there's just no time to relax like I haven't sat out on my porch or, you know, done anything like that because I have such a long list of things to accomplish. And and, it, and it's stuff that feels like, oh, yeah, I have to make that phone call. Oh, yeah, I have to figure out how to how to schedule that. Oh, yeah, well, I, I have to look up now how you do that. And we're getting ready to go out of town for two weeks. And it's like, okay, well, I need to set these things at least in place before I go. I'm comforted, Julie, that or Mindy, that you said that It takes a little while because I just haven't, I haven't really enjoyed like rest or relaxation Mm. in any form. (laughs) Yeah, it's stressful. Uh, One other thing that, um, another way I took this question was how long does it take to feel like home? Um, More like just feeling like you're at your home. Yeah. Mm And this might be different. I'd be interested to see what you think, Mindy. Like when we moved long distance, I can remember telling people, oh, we're new to the area. And Mm -hmm. I might have been there four to five years. (laughs) Oh, But I would say, oh, we're new to Nashville. And I would Mm. think, wait a minute, can I say that anymore? We've been here four years, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, moving locally, that's not so much true. You know, like I, I do still tell people, oh, we're really new to West Haven. You know, we've been here four Mm -hmm. months now. But Mm -hmm. I just wonder how long I'll say that. I don't know. I don't know why I do that. But I just, it's not like I feel like I'm new, but I think I want people to still be welcoming. And, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like I still need, uh, I still need to be brought into the, to the the group, you know. Or just that they'll understand why you're asking questions about Mm -hmm. things that, probably seem obvious to them by now, but maybe it's not obvious to you. All the stuff I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Or if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, they'll understand why and gently tell you, oh, well, we don't Mm -hmm. do that here. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) True. That's a thing. Yeah. (laughs) No, because even locally, like you've changed where you live in the, you know, area of Nashville. And Mm -hmm. it's totally different because you, there's sections, you Mm -hmm. know, when when you're in a bigger city. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Like you might think, oh, I'll just keep the same doctor because I'm staying in Nashville, air quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many suburbs of Nashville, like you could move one place and your doctor could be an hour away and you realize I'm actually not going to want to drive downtown mm-hmm. to right. go to that doctor anymore. And you might need to change. So there is that. But ironically enough, Julie, I've noticed that this is different where you live. In communities that have more transient people, 
And this mm-hmm. is a good transient in a good way. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. People coming and going a little bit more often, they are more accepting. Like you could say, oh, yeah, we lived here. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. they're used to meeting new people, letting new people in, and you Mm -hmm. don't feel so much like an outsider. Mm -hmm. Going to a small town is very different. And I've noticed I meet people here and they're like, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not from LaGrange either. I'm like, oh, you know, and I think we're going to have a lot in common. And I say, so how long have you been here? 25 years. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> you're from LaGrange, honey. <laughs> you're on the inside. <laughs> like you are from LaGrange. And so it's funny because that mentality is different. You know, like when we were in a suburb of Nashville, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Knoxville, it's not that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, when you move, you also get exciting things. You get to you get the chance to do things differently, especially at this stage of life. You might be like Julie and I or Mindy, who's getting near that time where your kids are leaving. And so you get the chance to do your house differently. You get the chance to set it up differently, to run it differently. So what are some things that you're doing differently in your house now than you wouldn't have done like in your younger years moving? Or different from the house that you move from? Well, I guess everything's kind of set up as a guest room. You know, it's not, you're not setting up your kids' rooms anymore. And um, it's funny because we have one who just moved back in with us. And um, it's so different than when he lived here. I thought it would be just like before he left, but it's not. It's different. You know, he's an adult living with us. Mm. It's not like before he left. And it's not, I don't mean it in a bad way at all. It's just not the same because it's not his bedroom with his stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just the room that I decorated. So he's having to sleep in a bed with pretty frou-frou china over the bed. And he's, (laughs) he was like, do I have to leave that up there? And I said, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't make yourself too much at home. (laughs) Yeah. We're not, we're not taking those down. We're not putting any posters up. That's it. You know, this is your space. (laughs) (laughs) So he said, I really need my desk in here and my uh, computer for work. And there really just wasn't a corner available. So it like sticks out across the bay window. So I was like, just keep the blinds pulled. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer the, the feature window of the house. You know, it's got, <laughs> got the blinds mm. pulled. <laughs> yeah. But I, definitely I know see it's that. temporary. So yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. different. I'm, <laughs> I'm going through that too, Julie. Um, the same thing. Cause I've, I've told you guys, like we had one move back in and mm-hmm. we weren't expecting it. I was willing to adjust the room for Grant because I have two other primary guest bedrooms mm-hmm. before I would hit and take his room from him. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was a big deal. And I know that sounds like there's a lot of rooms in my house, but that was a, that was a major issue with moving with two kids that are still actively at home and two kids that were out of the house, yet we also have family that lives long distance and they need to stay when they come. They don't just, you know, we, none of my kids and none of my family can just do a day visit. That mm-hmm. changes what you need in a house and how it functions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Bryce and I know we needed a house that we would only maybe use half of it a lot. Mm-hmm. And so we have a main level living situation that even when all the kids are gone, we could still function and just shut the upstairs off and shut the downstairs off until we need it. But otherwise, we could turn into a hotel and be really quick. Um, so mm-hmm. it, I just feel like I have to stay flexible, you know, when you have adult kids and then also when you have family that lives long distance. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. this is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I thought that my two guest rooms, because my mom lives in a room that's downstairs and our room's downstairs. And then we just have the two guest rooms and I just made them as guest rooms. And then when my daughter, she's coming today and she's bringing, her, you know, her two sons, my two grandsons. And she asked if she could have the bigger room because it has a really big closet and we'd put the crib in there. And then she said, could Ezra have the other room? Because I still have to get up and feed the baby, you know, like maybe at 5 a.m. And I don't want Ezra awake that early. Mm-hmm. So I said, sure, we have two rooms. Well, then David moves back. <laughs> <laughs> and so I really wanted to honor what I said, because that is going to be the best situation. So mm-hmm. I said, okay, David, you have to move out 
there, there's only the couch <laughs> left now. So <laughs> it's just funny how, you know, he said, well, I guess I'm the youngest. I get the couch. And he said, wait a minute. I'm not right. the youngest. He's uh, right. four years old and he's two months. He said, nope, <laughs> that doesn't count. You're still the youngest. <laughs> Yes. I yes. can trust you to sleep through the night, David. So, right, right. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that I'm excited about doing in this house is nobody has a bedroom anymore because my girls were actually, my two youngest were moving into off-campus apartments the same month we were moving. And rather than, I did buy some furniture and had been storing that, but rather than buying all new beds and everything like that. I just said, take your bedroom with you. And I remember wow. Lydia said, oh, I want a new tapestry for my apartment. And I said, well, why can't you just use one you have in your room at home? Oh, well, aren't you going to want that in the new house? I said, no, Lydia, you don't have a room at the new house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's sorry. not going to be decorated yeah. as Lydia's room. Take your stuff. Mm. Take it or you might not see it mm. again. Like, <laughs> Take it with you because you rent year round. <laughs> So it might as well live at your place year round. <laughs> mm. wow. And so now all my bedrooms are theoretically guest rooms. Now I know that won't work out totally because I do still have kids that are on our payroll. But mm -hmm. when they're off our payroll, they're out of our house and they <laughs> will be true guest rooms. But, um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. And so now in my new bedrooms, I'm trying to think of ways to maximize the number of people that could sleep in those rooms, just like you would a hotel. So like I'm getting a queen size bed in one with a trundle bed underneath. And then I'm getting a trundle bed with twin in the other one. And then like, I want to be able to pull those out so you could get three twins in a room or, you know, like I want to be able it to be just like if you said, hey, can I have a roll away in my hotel room? Here it is. Like, I just, I need to have mm -hmm. the most amount of people that can sleep in each room. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. saw on Facebook Marketplace the other day, full over full bunk beds. I almost thought about getting them, but I yeah. hate making bunk beds so much that I passed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I was thinking yeah. that could sleep a lot of people because each, <laughs> each bedroom has its own bathroom, so it's like a hotel room. So, yes. anyways, anyways, when I went to Costco, I needed new towels because it it does have more bathrooms than my other house. The square footage is pretty much the same, but it has more bathrooms, and I needed new towels. And I was kind of kind of pick out different towels for each bathroom, but then I thought, no, these are hotel rooms, and at Costco you can buy like a six pack of white bath towels. And then like a 12 pack of white hand towels. And I think you get like 16 white washcloths. And I was like, these are going in my cart. And that way I don't have to remember what bathroom had those towels. Right. And it's like everybody has hotel towels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so fun. It's funny because um, I remember a couple of houses back our church, I found out our church was selling um, two twin beds and um, the frame and the mattresses and the mattress sets were new. Ooh. And I was like, sold. Like, <laughs> I, I don't need them right now, but I know I'm going to need them. And those two twin beds, I mean, I can't get rid of them because I've put them in a large closet. And I mean, it was a pretty large closet. Yeah, it's a big closet. <laughs> but I've put them in a large closet before because if I had people come, I'm like, okay, well, it's just another mm -hmm. people could sleep. Um, I did that with my bathroom downstairs, Marie, about like, it's totally guests. Like anyone that stays at our home would go in the basement because I didn't have any kids actively living down there. Well, now Grant mm. is living down there. Do you know the first thing I did? All of that guest stuff I took out and I put all his own towels and my older oh, shower curtain. Yeah. And I mean, like, I will redo that bathroom when I have guests come. Sure. But I'm like, he, you're not getting my guest stuff. Like, yeah. this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So th that's kind of fun. Um, mm -hmm. Another new thing, it, it's going to sound weird, but we had had our lawn mowed for over 10 years. It was an acre and it was a hassle. And so we just had a lawn and, and I loved it. I loved the fact that we were not mowing our lawn anymore. And now in this house, the lawn is small, but we have to go back to mowing it. I mean, I could hire it out, but it seems like a waste because honestly, it takes 15 minutes. But so mm -hmm. I got a battery operated lawnmower, mm -hmm. blower and weed eater. 
And so I've been having to learn how to work those. And Mindy, I've been taking a page out of your book because Mm. for some reason, I don't know what kind of trees are. I asked my neighbor, but he didn't know either. They're dropping right now these little tan balls. They're like sand almost. And they keep going on my porch every Mm. day. And like, if I go to sit out there, then I have to sit in all these. So I remember you saying, you just blow your porch off. And so I went and got my battery operated blower and just, you could just blow it off, blow off the sidewalk in front. So I'm not um, tracking it in with my shoes. And so anyways, this is a new thing that I am learning to do. And I'm having to learn like, how does a sprinkler system work? And oh, people mm-hmm. pay to have their lawn treated. Like we lived on an acre where the only thing you did was mow it short enough that your weeds didn't look too bad. <laughs> you can't do that in West Haven, Marie. <laughs> no, and it's, there's a huge, I had to ask my neighbor, I texted his wife and said, would your husband be willing to come over and kind of give me a lesson on how my sprinkler system works? I knew where the box was, but I opened it up. The controls were so complicated. I couldn't tell Mm -hmm. what it was set for, how I would Mm -hmm. ever change it, anything. So he came over and gave me a little tutorial. I videoed him while he explained it because I knew Mm -hmm. I would have to go over Mm -hmm. and watch it later. Like there's just a big (laughs) learning curve on even lawn care. There is I still don't have that sprinkler system down yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me tell you both. Um, there's an app that you can get to attach to your sprinkler system. Oh. That Bryce got that on his phone. I didn't even know about this. He was like, oh, we're on vacation. Oh, it's like, you know, 90 degrees all week and we're gone. I better start that sprinkler up. And oh. He could do it and he could do it phone. from that far away? Yes. I wonder if you have to have like a Wi-Fi enabled sprinkler system or Let something. me... Yeah, there's something you have to purchase yeah, to do. Cheese. Let me let me ask Bryce about that. I'll get mm, back to you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say um, to go along with this question, one thing with living in our house and making it feel like home, one thing I've kind of mentioned on the podcast is um, since we have moved a lot, we did not buy any new furniture for, and we still haven't. It's mm-hmm. been two and a half years. And I might be ready next year. Mm. So Mm -hmm. this is something like there were so many new things and we've done so many new things with the learning curve and people and seasons and holiday decorations that I just needed something to be the same. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that I chose that to be our furniture. So for me personally, um, I just use what I have and I've made it work. And maybe next year we'll come in and be ready to, you know, we will have settled long enough. I'm like, okay, now I can handle, you know, letting this go to the basement and I get something new for the main level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more thing that I'm doing differently in this house and you guys might be able to relate with this is I am not putting one thing in that pull down attic. We were oh. taking things out of our pull down mm-hmm. attic the even the night before we had to be out and they would they were covered in dust. Mm-mm. Why we ever thought we would use anything that we had put up there. Now we kind of had to use it in that house because there really wasn't anywhere you could store else you could store your Christmas decorations and stuff like that, but it should mm-hmm. have been Christmas decorations only. It shouldn't have been the box from the TV we bought five years ago because I thought, well, what if it breaks in the four month period and we want to take it back to Target? Did I ever take the box back out of the attic? No. Old doors, there were chairs, there were (laughs) shelving systems that had just rotted. Like Nothing needs to go in my pull down attic ever Mm -hmm. again. I haven't even opened it. They could have left it full. I don't even know. I have not even opened it, but there's one little attic space that you can open through a door on the second floor and you can just walk into it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I put my Christmas decorations. But I'm not storing anything in attics. If I don't need it in my general house, then I don't need it in an attic. (laughs) Amen. That's how I feel. That's how I've changed the most is when I, when I go out shopping, I just, I put it back. I think, eh, I don't need this. Cause I think about where is it going to go? Where's it going to get stored? Especially if it's seasonal. I used to buy a lot of seasonal stuff. It's like, nope, I'm not filling yeah. up those closets. I'm not putting things in the attic. I mean, I have, like you, I have a walk-in for my Christmas stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I don't want I don't want it full. I mean, we had stuff in our attic. We had stuff in our garage. Like Marie's husband, Steve, poor guy, was out pulling out 
old tile that we had saved, you know, from the last right. time we tiled a bathroom, they always leave it with you like they're doing you a favor. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. they just don't want to haul it off. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he had to get under these stairs and pull it out. And it's like, we are not doing that. We are not saving anything like that anymore. So I'm just really conscious of leaving you know, if you come to my house, you might not think, oh, she's become a minimalist. No, I haven't. But in the storage <laughs> areas, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to not have those things full. I yeah. love that you both brought that up. There is a freedom when you've moved of, of being able to make a decision to not purchase something or not bring something in your house. If you've had to just go through every single thing you own, touch it, clean behind it, clean under it. Mm-hmm. You learn real. You, there is a freedom. You're like, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> or more like, if one thing comes in, one thing goes out. <laughs> yes. yes, my mom has said that. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Well, Mindy, I love this question that you asked. Do you have any takeaways or changes you've personally made since moving? I definitely think this attic thing falls under that. I think I said in the last episode that I would have, I would have not said I was a minimalist, but I would have said I don't own a lot of stuff. Um, but or I felt like I didn't own a lot of stuff for the size of my family. And I still don't really think that, but anything you have to move makes you feel like you own too much because <laughs> you've got to pick it up and move it. And then you have to find a new place for it. And by the end, it sounds terrible, but My dad and mom moved and my mom said by the end last time, my dad was just throwing things away. And I seriously got to that point of like, I would like to donate this, but I have to be out in six hours and I cannot mentally think of what I would do with this item anymore. Goodbye. (laughs) Yes. Have you ever got to that point, Mindy? <laughs> I think we we all three of yeah. us are commiserating over this 100%. You just do not care. At some point, you're like, we just need to get out of here. <laughs> and then, yeah, there's a purge that happens before you move. And like Julie said, there's a purge that happens after. I'm very aware of that. It happens every time. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, so I definitely do think that I learned that I own too many things and I don't want to carry all that. Um, But uh, another thing I felt like I really did a lot of work on this month out of necessity, um, or I guess out of the last six weeks, was we had bought a house, but we still had to sell our house. And we had to show our house... I think it was 26 times before we got an offer. And in today's market, it was only on the market about 11 days, but that's a lot of times in 11 days to get your hopes up, to think this is going to be the one to clean your house, to prepare, to leave, to be disappointed. Um, And then you have to go through the whole inspection process, which was 10 plus days before you even know if that offer is going to go through or are you going to have to put your house back on the market? And then you have to move. And like there was just so much. And I really found myself listening to a lot of Tim Keller's sermons about God's character because you're going to laugh. But, you know, when things like that come into your life, you really dig down deep spiritually. And I had this whole thing of notes on my phone. And then I would put like the answered prayer requests. And then I would go back Mm -hmm. and read them when I was like, oh, is this thing going to work out? And then it would work out. And I I don't want to lose that feeling. I don't want to constantly be living in a state where I am so sick with anxiety that I food tastes like sawdust. But I do want to feel that need to go to God too. You know what I'm saying? What, what yes. am I saying, you guys? <laughs> as much yeah. as you need God. Yeah, I've been and saying that you're... for like the last two years that it's you don't like the thing that's put you in that place, mm-hmm. but you also don't want to lose that aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a sweet surrender. Mm-hmm. And it is a surrender. If anyone who's gone through anything can hopefully know that they can see God more when they're looking for him more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I felt like I learned some things about myself and about God during that time period. Mindy, what have you come to learn about yourself in different moves? I know that you've had a lot of moves where you've come out and you're like, oh, I hated that, but I know this now. 
Okay. So just like going through all of your stuff, you take inventory of your house and then you get pickier with your new house. Mm -hmm. It is the same emotionally, mentally, physically of your own person that if you didn't like something about yourself, you have an opportunity to change. You can, I have been so many different Mindy's. Really? And so I, (laughs) yes, I, Bryce and I were joking about it. Tim Keller on a podcast the other day that I listened to made made a comment about a man that said my wife and I have been married like 30 something years and she's lived during that time. She's lived with five different men mm-hmm. and they've all been me mm-hmm. and I relate with that. And so does Bryce. And and so um, one thing I would say that I have learned and I would encourage anyone that's moving either locally or long distance Say yes to everything the first year. Mm, you're mm-hmm. you're on a learning curve with your house. Hard. You're whatever. And so as you meet new people, because naturally you'll come into contact with different people, even in a different neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And maybe you'll, you know, maybe you've never played tennis before. Someone invites you to play tennis. You give it a shot. You say yes. Maybe you don't like tennis now you have a new friend. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just that like putting yourself out there, you kind of just know going into it the whole first year, like I had to build myself up. This is, this takes a lot of courage. I had a lot more social anxiety than I had ever had before. I think coming out of COVID, I mean, this was a major work for me to things, Mm -hmm. but I'm so thankful because maybe they're not activities you keep, like I said, Mm -hmm. but But, you know, being uncomfortable, saying yes, and then learning a little bit more about yourself. Maybe you'll love tennis. And -hmm. that's just an example. But Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I agree. I I think that's one thing I've learned about myself is that I am not a put yourself out there kind of person. And where I lived before, I didn't really have to. I mean, I lived there 24 years. I kind of had a stable set group of friends and been in that same church for that long. And, you know, um, but moving here, I knew I didn't want to just isolate myself and not take advantage of the great community that's here. So I have said yes to everything. And sometimes it's like, I got to cut something out. You know, I'm doing too much. (laughs) But a lot of it was just a one-time thing. You know, Mm -hmm. like you said, I went and I tried it and Mm -hmm. That's not for me right now, you know, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. I put myself out there and I met people. And that was really the more important thing to get out of it was um, to just put myself into a frame of mind of always wanting to meet new people and try new things. And because that's really not my personality, I didn't think, but I've, I've done it. And like the other day, Marie was like, come and play pickleball. And afterwards, it was so much fun. Like, it's, I can see why it's totally addictive. And there were probably, what, 20 ladies there Mm -hmm. that I didn't know before at all. And I don't know them well now, but I mean, I don't, I know their names and I might run into them in the grocery. And Mm -hmm. that's the cool thing about living here is no matter what you do, you're going to see people Mm -hmm. just at your grocery or whatever. And Mm -hmm. that makes you feel more like home when somebody calls your name someplace and says, hey. And Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I, um, I thanked Marie for encouraging me to go because I don't know that I would have done that by myself. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I have to channel my inner Mindy a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I try to channel that person. I hear (laughs) Mindy's voice. (laughs) Yeah. Go, go. (laughs) Yes. This is the new Marie. No, that's the beauty of friends, though, that have walked a road before you. Listen to their advice. I mean, Mindy has walked that road. I mean, she knows. Mm -hmm. So she has valuable wisdom and advice to give in this area. And it is valuable. So for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, when you move someplace new, you get to, like you said, I hadn't even thought about this before, but... I could have said, oh, I'm kind of introverted, shy, Julie. Well, I can, Mm -hmm. I don't have to be that here. They don't know me as that. I could be more Mm -hmm. outgoing, Julie. I'm fun, Julie. (laughs) My name's fun, Julie. (laughs) I should have changed my name. Not that you're not always fun, even as an introvert. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, Mindy also wanted to know if we're enjoying our homes and with as much work as it was to move, was it worth it and why? 
And Julie, I know that you've said it was totally worth it. Totally worth it. I've never looked back, never had a regret. I really don't even think about that that other house, which I just think has to be a God thing because I never envisioned it that way. I thought I would mourn and lament it and, Mm -hmm. you know, and long for it. And I haven't like, this is so much better and such a better space, such a better community. Um, And John has felt the same way. Oh, that's even so though he awesome. hasn't he hasn't gotten to enjoy it as much as I have, you know, but he's glad that I am. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have really I know that I'm going to enjoy it. I haven't really gotten a chance to enjoy the house, but I have gotten a chance to enjoy the community through the pickleball. And um, just I love that so much. And I also see a lot of other activities that I want to try. Um, I just sort of haven't had time yet. But last week. Um, the morning just flew by. I think I took the dog for a walk and then I went and played pickleball for like two and a half hours, but I thought it'd maybe only been an hour and I got done and it was like almost 11 and I was feeling kind of guilty because Steve was home working. And then I was like walking back and I was thinking, you know, I'm having way too much fun here. (laughs) Like I could think of (laughs) three more things I want to do this week and try. Like I definitely feel like, it's a a new lease on fun for me at my age. Um, I feel a little guilty because Steve doesn't quite get to enjoy it in the way that I get to enjoy it. But he <laughs> I know. he said he's fine with me enjoying it, and he doesn't want me to not enjoy it. But it is kind of like, oh man, there's so many things to try out, and yeah, I totally, I totally think it's worth it. In the aspect of it was just time for something new at my stage Fresh. of life. Yeah. 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 So yeah, worth the work. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, I told I did seriously after we played pickleball Friday night, I went home and because you had asked me to come back Saturday. And of course I wanted to come back, but I was struggling with guilt. Like like John is at home not feeling good and I'm out playing pickleball. Like <laughs> Could I even tell people that like that? Yeah, that the disparity there just doesn't seem right. And and, you know, and John said, Julie, that is fine. Like it would I wouldn't want this to go to waste. Like, you know, like I'm glad that you are enjoying it. And he kind of helped me through that because, you know, honestly, if John were still working, he wouldn't be enjoying those things anyway. He'd be working. Right. You know, right. um, Right. That's kind of the way it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, it is. It is enjoyable and it is worth it. Um, and hopefully if you're thinking about moving, um, maybe we've inspired you. Uh, maybe we've scared you off. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there's good and bad parts, but hopefully when you get yeah. to where you're going, you do enjoy it and it does make the work all worth it. Yeah, I will say the big one bif- difference we didn't talk about was um, the physical toll. Mm. Like. Mm. I've never just been a person to have lots of aches and pains and now mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. And I really think it was from moving. Like I've lifted so many boxes. I said, I did the work of a man mm-hmm. <laughs> to move here mm-hmm. and like getting on ladders and picking things up and going up downstairs and, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and really every single person in our family this year has moved and I helped with all. So yes, <laughs> it's been the year of moving. Yes. So that is a huge difference. Like um, if you're going to move as, when you're older, you better get, better get lots of help. Yeah. <laughs> hire a trainer, hire a trainer first and get in shape. Yeah. Get that back strong. Well, I'm glad yeah. that I have one. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have been able to do <laughs> Yeah, what I did. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, listeners, we'd love for you to share your moving stories, or if you're moving in midlife, we'd love to hear about it. Come and find us on Instagram at midlife matters podcast or email us at midlife matters podcast at gmail.com. But before we go, we want to do, I'm a fan. Julie, what are you a fan of this week? Okay. Um, I am a fan of a label maker. Okay. <laughs> Don't oh, laugh. Yes. But this is the coolest thing. I saw it on someone's Instagram page and they had posted like my favorite in, uh, Amazon finds. Mm-hmm. So I just went and looked. A lot of it was stuff I wasn't interested in, but she had this label maker and it's the Jaden's label maker machine, portable Bluetooth printer for labeling home office. Uh, organization mini label maker 
and it looks like it's white. It looks like it should say Apple on it somewhere. Mm. So it's really cool and sleek. Mm -hmm. And you use an app on your phone. So when you go to type in what you want on your label, it looks just like your word processor. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. It's got all the fonts, the boldness, the italics, the font size, and it comes with the tape in it. And so I'm in the process. I've labeled all the light switches in the garage, mm -hmm. the garage doors. I've labeled the laundry room cabinets. Like this is where the pods go and the, you know, mm -hmm. this is where batteries go, flashlights go, yeah. everything. So I think I'll start the kitchen next. <laughs> Not like it's going to be on the outside of the door, right. but at right. least when you go to put things back, you'll know if you've hit the right spot, you know, sure. mm -hmm. but it's really fun, really fun. And they're just these nice yes. little white labels. I can Listen. totally see that being very satisfying. I've even yes. labeled, since David was moving in, I labeled my uh, chargers, my cords. Oh, yes. You have to <laughs> go back to stuff. doing that. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, okay. Bryce totally is 100% is with you on that, Julie. That's made our lives easier. Anytime we move, he's the labeler. Yeah. Mm. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so today I'm a fan of... <laughs> All of the um, local Facebook sites to help you get to know your new area or new town, mm -hmm. um, join all of them. Because even if it's not something that you're interested in, it will help you navigate your new place so much better, so much faster. And also to have a resource because you could message anyone, you know, mm -hmm. like through Facebook and say, you know, hey, I'm new. Like you mentioned this. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more? So, I mean, join all the sites, the yard sale site, the city government typically has a local site, um, mom's groups. There's so many different, like one of my favorite for LaGrange, it's called the chatty women of LaGrange. I mean, yeah. how cool is that? Yeah. And that literally anytime there's something like ground is broken for a new building. Oh, that site lights up. Okay. What's going in at the, at the blah, blah, blah location. Oh, and I can learn what's going cool. in at that location. So oh. join all the local sites. <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah, yes. That's great. All right. Well, this week I'm a fan of my dishwasher. So I know I've mentioned it before. I love the Bosch dishwasher and I moved into this house and they did not have one. And it was still Ooh. a good brand Gen Air, but I ran it a couple times and I could not count on my dishes coming out clean. After you've had a dishwasher where no matter what you put in it, it comes out clean, you cannot go back. So I said to Steve, would it just be awful if I replaced my dishwasher? Because this one isn't broken. And he's like, I know how much you like your dishwasher. So if you want to replace it, go ahead. And I got on Lowe's website and of course they were having a Labor Day sale. And then Bosch right now is having a rebate on their installation. So if you get a dishwasher installed within like from the end of August to I think the middle of October, you can get the $175 back from Bosch. They'll give it to you in the form of a Lowe's gift card. And I've actually done that like 10 years ago when I replaced one. Um, and they hadn't run this sale the last time I got one, and now they're running it again. And so I'm totally going to do that. And also, when you have a dishwasher installed, you save the tax. So if you're buying an $800 dis dishwasher, you're saving $80 just right there by picking installation because it moves from mm -hmm. being a product to a service. So they don't tax you. So anyways, all that to say that you don't even have to have your husband involved. Like literally, I went and picked <laughs> out my dishwasher I scheduled the installation. The guy from Lowe's came, had it in and out in 15 minutes, moved my old one to the garage. I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. Like it's so easy. And it turns out that my other dishwasher, once I really looked at the serial number, was eight years old. So I didn't feel as bad about oh, that because yeah. an eight-year-old okay, dishwasher yeah. is kind of getting near the end of its life. Yeah. And if you have been frustrated with your dishwasher, I just, I am such a fan of the Bosch dishwasher. You could buy any mm -hmm. model. My last two mm -hmm. were the lowest model they make and they still cleaned like a dream. Now the one I got now, they weren't given a rebate on the lowest model. So I thought, well, I'll go one up because I might as well get the rebate. But yeah, I mean, I, I made yeah. cookies this weekend to test it out. And you know, oatmeal cookies, the oatmeal and everything oh, is like right. congealed to the side of your mixing bowl. I don't even rinse that, you guys. I literally turn it upside down and put it in the top <laughs> of my dishwasher and there was not uh -huh. a spot on it. They tell yes. you in the manual, you can scrape your dishes, but don't rinse them. 
I mean, okay, we seriously. need to talk though. I have a Bosch dishwasher and I had one previously, but this one doesn't dry. No, you I have can't. to use rinse aid. Do you use rinse okay. aid? Jet dry? I think so. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what that light is telling me it needs yeah, to be. Yeah, that's what the light's telling you. Yeah, it will dry a lot better if you are using your jet dry. Yes. I have to hand dry everything. It's so frustrating. Really? Okay, well I start mine I start mine at night and they're dry by the morning. Do you have a well, Bosch? For the most part. I have a Bosch and mm-hmm. I totally echo 100% what you just said cuz we did the same thing in this house. I'm a fanatic about my dishwasher and mm-hmm. I can't tell you it was the best gift that Bryce bought me yes. was to replace the dishwasher with one I knew would work. Mm-hmm. And I love it. Yes, yes definitely. Bosch dishwasher. I just, I can't mm-hmm. recommend it enough. So mm-hmm. anyways, uh, if you want to take advantage of that rebate, even when this episode comes out, you'll still have time if you go to Lowe's and do that. So, all right, you guys, I love talking with you about okay. moving. This was kind of therapeutic to talk over what's been going on. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It all right, we'll talk to you next week. All right. <laughs> Bye. Great. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.